So if you ever eat something and then two hours later you feel super, super hungry, it could be because you had naked carbs and as a result, your ghrelin, your hunger hormone, is doing this curve. Hello angels and welcome to the Glucose Goddess Show. I'm Justine Chuspe, I'm a biochemist and I'm obsessed with food, health, science, and teaching you science. So today we're gonna to talk about something that might sound a little strange. It's called putting clothing on your carbs. If you're like, what the heck is Jesse talking about? Let me show you some examples. So I'm gonna show you a few different traditional food combinations. And I want you to think about what they all have in common. Rice and beans, melon and ham, pasta and cheese, bread with olive oil, grapes and cheese, tacos with meat, naan and curry, porridge with nuts, pizza, which is dough with cheese on top and other things. So all these food combinations have one source of carbs and then they also importantly have also a source of protein, fat or fiber. Mm hmm And this protein, fat, or fiber is combined with the carbs. That is putting clothing on your carbs. Now let's dig in. When we eat carbs on their own, for example, if we ate this pot of noodles or this rice cake on their own, that would mean eating these carbs naked. And naked carbs are 100% glucose because carbs turn to glucose when we digest them. And so as a result for our body, when these noodles or this rice cake are arriving naked on their own with nothing else, the glucose in them is gonna arrive really quickly into our bloodstream, creating a big glucose spike. Now, glucose spikes are something that our body wants to get rid of. Our body does not love really big glucose spikes because they're damaging on multiple levels. Inflammation, aging, insulin release, hormonally, etc. So our body is kind of playing this like crazy game of Tetris where it's trying to grab all of the glucose molecules that are arriving and put them away before they cause any damage and they stack up too high. So as soon as you have a glucose spike, your body is playing Tetris, trying to put these glucose molecules away. So what happens? if we add something to these naked carbs, just by adding these sources of proteins, fats, and fiber to those naked carbs, now the carbs have clothing on them. And when you eat carbs with clothing on them, they create a smaller glucose spike in your body. So here's the example, noodles on their own versus noodles with spinach and chicken. As you can see, the second spike is much smaller. By adding the spinach, which is fiber, and adding the protein from the chicken, we are reducing the spike of the noodles. Second example, rice cake on its own versus adding some nut butter to that rice cake. As you can see, the spike is much smaller when we add that protein and that fat from the nut butter onto the rice cake. So what's actually going on? Well, when your body receives, for example, this rice cake with the nut butter, instead of all the glucose molecules in the rice cake being able to really quickly arrive into your bloodstream, the proteins and the fats in the nut butter are slowing down the speed at which they're arriving because your body also has to digest and move the nut butter. All of the glucose molecules in the rice cake are meshed with all of this and they arrive more slowly into your bloodstream. Same thing with the noodles. By adding the spinach and the chicken, you're not reducing the amount of noodles. Same for the rice cake, it's still there. But because there are other things in that meal, you're reducing the speed at which the glucose molecules are arriving into your bloodstream. As a result, your body doesn't have to scramble and play a crazy intense game of Tetris because the glucose molecules are arriving more slowly and over a longer period of time. And this is really, really healthy for you. So this is clothing on carbs. And not only does it make a lot of these dishes and a lot of these carbs way more tasty, it also reduces their glucose spike. What happens when we reduce the glucose spike of something? 
You guys know I've been doing my glucose hacks religiously. They are the foundation of my dietary habits. But adding the molecules and anti-spike has really allowed me to get to the next level in a few areas. One, bloating. I didn't even know that I would get bloated. With anti-spike, I'm like, oh, I used to get bloated. I feel so much better now. Two, energy levels. Super consistent. Eagle energy all day. And three, cravings for sugar. I love sugar. I want to eat chocolate all the time. And anti-spike has given me a feeling of having a total superpower when it comes to my sugar cravings. I don't feel controlled by them anymore at all. It's truly amazing. And I know that these natural molecules are going to help my long-term fasting glucose and fasting insulin levels, which is so key to physical and mental health and to healthy aging. So, Go to antispike.com to see all the science behind these ingredients, to see testimonials from thousands of people who've tried it, and to order your own antispike formula bottle and try it for yourself. Well, instead of having lots of inflammation, we have less. Instead of glycation, which is aging, happening really quickly, we have less. Instead of having more insulin release, which is something that over time builds up to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, we have less of it. But also, every time we have a spike, we also have a dip. And the bigger the spike, the bigger the dip. This dip can lead to very common symptoms, like excessive hunger, cravings, fatigue. So if you're somebody who's been eating naked carbs all day, all the time, and you don't feel so well, clothing on carbs might be a really good solution. This is a hack that I like to keep in mind whenever I'm on the go, for every meal I'm having. I want to make sure I'm never, ever, ever having my carbs naked, because that's going to cause me to honestly feel like crap, and I don't want to feel like crap. So if you're at a friend's house and they have a brownie, which is carbs, ask for some Greek yogurt with it, which is protein and fat, so that you can put some clothing on that brownie. If you're at a work breakfast and they have bagels, make sure you're adding some salmon or some avocado to that bagel to make sure that bagel is not a naked carb. And if you're a bit confused, like, okay, what are proteins, fats, fibers, starches, etc.? I have in the description of this episode a PDF that I call my master food classification list, which gives you very simple columns of which foods are starches and sugars, which are carbs and that you should not eat naked, and which foods are proteins, fats, and fibers, which are the clothing you should be adding to those carbs. So download that, print it out. It's going to stay in your brain. It's going to be super, super helpful. I'm just going to give you a quick example of a day of purely naked carbs that would cause a lot of issues. Breakfast, orange juice and toast, naked carbs. Lunch, some pasta and a cookie, naked carbs. Dinner, some bread, some rice, naked carbs. So I hope that's not how you're living and eating every single day, but often we don't realize that one meal a day or one snack a day is actually pure naked carbs. And that's something we really want to avoid. I want to mention a study that's specifically about how different types of food impact our hunger hormones. So this study is called, it's a bit of a complicated name, so don't worry about it too much, but acyl and total ghrelin, ghrelin are suppressed strongly by ingested proteins, weakly by lipids, and biphasically by carbohydrates. So this graph is a tad complicated, but I'm going to explain it. So on this graph, you have a measure of ghrelin. So ghrelin is the hormone that tells you that you're hungry. So when there's a lot of ghrelin in your body, you're like, I got to eat something. And when it gets lower, you're like, I'm full, I'm good, I don't have to eat anymore. So in this study, scientists did a test. They gave people three different foods to eat. One was pure carbs. And this is the line with the little circles, with the black circles. One was pure fat, probably some olive oil or something. This is the line with the little triangles. And one was pure protein, probably some chicken. This is the line with the squares. The takeaway here is that the line that represents the carb-only meal, maybe it was a slice of bread, maybe it was an orange juice, it goes down really quickly which is measuring the amount of ghrelin. So after you eat something that's just carbs, ghrelin goes down really quickly, which means you're not hungry anymore. But then look, after about two hours, ghrelin starts shooting back up all the way higher to even the pre-meal levels. This means that when we eat naked carbs, hunger is suppressed 
just for a little bit, and then it returns with a vengeance. So if you ever eat something, and then two hours later, you feel super, super hungry, it could be because you had naked carbs, and as a result, your ghrelin, your hunger hormone, is doing this curve. On the other hand, if you look at the curves of the fat and the protein, you see that ghrelin stays low for a very, 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 very long time, up to five hours, which is why fats and proteins keep us full and satiated. So by adding them to your carb-only meal, not only are you getting all the other benefits, you're also gonna keep your ghrelin lower for longer so that you're not super hungry every two hours. Cause that's kind of a difficult situation to be in when you're just hungry all the time and you don't know why and you keep eating and you keep being hungry every two hours, what's going on? It's probably the ghrelin guys, it's probably the ghrelin. So I want you to always be thinking about this. Is my snack just naked carbs? Is it just candy? In that case, you know, add some almonds to it. Is my breakfast just naked carbs? Is it just a fruit smoothie? In that case, add some eggs to it. Always be thinking clothes on carbs. Now here are a few other examples of the glucose spikes of carbs that are naked versus carbs with some clothing on them. One of my favorite ones is chocolate cake on its own versus chocolate cake with some clothing in the form of yogurt. Yogurt is a great clothing to add to carbs. It is made of proteins and fats. Another example, melon on its own and melon with prosciutto. Prosciutto is protein and fat. It reduces the spike of the melon. You stay full for longer, have fewer cravings, help your body manage things. So two main questions here that we have to address because this hack has some nuance. Now you might think, okay, well, if fat is clothing, what if I just add two pounds of butter to every single thing that I eat? Then that's adding clothing to my carbs, right? Wrong. This is where you have to use your judgment. Do not add two pounds of butter to everything you eat. Then this hack becomes not helpful and becomes detrimental. So add your clothing in measure, okay? Do it with some judgment. Think about how much would be okay to add without going overboard on the fat or the amount that you're eating. Second thing, what about fruit? People often ask me, well, do fruit really count as naked carbs? This is kind of a complicated, nuanced question as well, because technically whole fruit contains fiber, but they also contain sugar and carbs. So really the fiber in the piece of whole fruit almost acts like natural clothing on those carbs. It is true. However, because today the fruit that we eat has been bred for centuries to be very, very sweet and very juicy and lower in fiber, the fiber content is much lower than it would have been when nature first invented that fruit. Okay, here's an example. If you compare an ancestral banana full of seeds and fiber, much smaller, much less sweet, and a modern day banana. Very little fiber, a lot of sugar in it. Very delicious, but also causes a bigger spike than its actual real ancestors. So it's up to you for the fruit. I always try to add a little bit of clothing to my fruit. For example, I'll add some nuts or nut butter. This is a really good example of a really big sweet pear, big glucose spike, and just adding a bit of nut butter to that is gonna lower the spike. Another example is mango. So tropical fruits are extra sweet. So mango on its own versus the same amount of mango plus shea pudding, which is made with shea seeds and almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. Again, here you have proteins, fat and fiber being added to the mango. So if you want, and if you can, it is helpful to add a bit of clothing to your fruit if you wanna reduce the glucose spike, especially if you have them in the morning. A breakfast which is just fruit is not good enough. You need to have some protein in there, otherwise you're not fueling your body properly. You're gonna be hungry very quickly and you're gonna experience a big glucose spike. So that's it, my dears. That was my clothes on carbs master guide. Download the PDF in the description of this episode if you want my food classification master list to help you become a master at putting clothing on your carbs. And think about this throughout the day, you know, whenever you're having a meal or a snack, think about this. Am I having naked carbs? In which case, make sure to add some clothing to them. I'll see you next time.